All right, in this video, we're going to discuss upstream LAN connectivity with UCS in end host mode. And to start, we'll do a quick review of pinning. So with end host mode, you have pinning, and you have two different types of pinning. You've got dynamic pinning, and you've got static pinning. So we're showing dynamic pinning here in red and static pinning in orange. Now, dynamic pinning is what happens if you don't do anything special. If you just create servers, and you assign them vNICs and you connect up links to the system and you turn it on and you let it rip everything is going to be using dynamic pinning and that's where the fabric interconnect is picking for you it's picking uh, a, the, an uplink for each server to use based on you know a decision that it makes at the time the other method is static pinning and static pinning uh, something that you would you would define manually f to provide some traffic engineering or traffic management for a particular server application. In this case here we've got an Oracle server that we've dis defined static pinning for. So we created a pin group called Oracle in UCS Manager and then we went to uplink number four here and we assigned uplink number four to that pin group called Oracle. And then we went to the Oracle service profile and we went to vNIC 0 here and we applied that vNIC to the Oracle pin group. So by doing that, um, all of the traffic from this Oracle machine is going to use uplink number 4. Meanwhile, the traffic from all the other servers here, servers X and Y, will be using dynamic pinning and they will use uplinks that have not been applied to a static pin group. So in this case here we've got uplink number 1 is available for dynamic pinning, so therefore we've got servers X and Y using uplink 1 and the Oracle machine using uplink number 4. So we're, we were able to segregate the traffic from the Oracle machine uh, between the other servers. Now, if uplink number 1 were to fail here, and if there was no other uplinks available for dynamic pinning, well then we will use uplink number 4 for the other systems as a, as a fallback. So as long as there are interfaces or uplinks avail available for dynamic pinning, those will be used. But if none are left because they've all failed, and if there's an uplink available that has been defined for static pinning, well that, also, that will also be used for the servers that we're using dynamic pinning. Now, uh, what happens here as well with dynamic pinning is that the Fabric Interconnect will s look every 300 seconds to load balance the traffic across all of the uplinks for dynamic pinning. So what were to happen if I had a running system here and I added two more uplinks, uplink 2 and uplink 3? Now there's an imbalance here. I've got uplinks 2 and 3 with no traffic at all and I've got uplink number one with all the traffic. So every 300 seconds the Fabric Interconnect is going to look at this and then it's going to find, hey, there's an imbalance here. I've got an imbalance in the ratio of vNICs to uplinks. So what it's going to do is it's going to make a load balancing decision and it could move any one of these server connections to a new uplink. In this case here it's going to move server Y from uplink one to uplink two. And in doing that it would have to send a gratuitous ARP um, out of uplink 2 to alert the upstream network that this MAC address is moved and it will do that. And what we've achieved here is load balancing, dynamic load balancing. So as you add new uplinks to the Fabric Interconnect or as you add more servers or, or servers that we're using a lot of uh, connections are, are, now, or, are now powered off and removed, um, all of that could influence a load balancing decision uh, with dynamic pinning.